This is the Quali Sports Model 5. This is a special edition. It's really just the Dolphin with an extended two year comprehensive warranty instead of just one, and six years on the frame and fork instead of five. It comes with a nine speed drivetrain, 11 to 34 tooth, instead of a seven speed, 14 to 28. That's pretty significant a torque sensing bottom bracket instead of the 12 magnet cadence sensing that we see on their other models, and an adjustable suspension fork that looks like about 40 millimeters of travel. It has preload and lockout. I also noticed the nicer tires with reflective sidewall stripes, puncture protection, and steel fenders that are included. And of course, this has the dual battery setup by default. So this is $19.99 instead of $16.99 for the dual battery Dolphin or $13.99 for the single battery Dolphin. The special edition comes in two different colorways and the paint is a little nicer, kind of pearlescent. From my perspective, you really get a lot for those $300 and I would lean in this direction if you want that more fluid torque sensing feel instead of a cadence sensor. And of course the suspension fork just really improves the ride quality. Quali Sports has been doing a great job for five years. It's the fifth, <laughs> fifth year anniversary. That's why they're doing this bike. And I've always loved how they have the battery integrated into that seat post, okay? There are some trade-offs because you can't switch this for like a suspension seat post. And you know, it's uniquely large and it adds some weight, but how beautiful does this bike look having the battery right there? The interesting thing is a lot of other folding electric bikes, they'll put the battery inside the main tube and that's where the second battery is on this bike. So you get a much higher capacity for those long distance rides. Maybe you're a heavier rider, or you're gonna get their optional cargo racks, something like that. Having that extra juice is just going to extend your ride and allow you to use the higher levels of assist all the way up to level five and use that throttle more frequently and make it home without having to, you know, pedal. If you do have to pedal though, keep in mind this bike's about 58 pounds with both batteries mounted and you've got a beautiful drivetrain here. Nine speed Shimano Altus 11 to 34 tooth cassette. You can see this is pretty nice hardware back here. I believe it's nickel plated Shimano branded. That is nice for a bike that is 1999. So 2000 bucks. And this is a folding bike as well. So, you know, coming back to the aesthetic is really nice. These limited edition runs, there's 30 of them and there's kind of the teal white or they have a brighter teal color. This bike, it has 165 millimeter crank arms. So they're almost full size, but they're, they're a little bit shorter and that's gonna reduce the possibility of having pedal strikes. You might see that the battery extends all the way down to here and then there's this wire that's kind of a flexi cable so you could lower the seat height or raise it. And it's fairly adjustable. Same thing with that that stem telescopes up and down for a more natural comfortable upright body position and I love that they've got an aluminum alloy guard on the outside of that 52 tooth chain ring it's gonna stop those ground strikes and it's gonna keep the chain on track a little bit better it's also gonna protect your pant leg you can see that I've got a reflective strap here just keep in mind from you know I just don't want them to get snagged but even if you didn't have that 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 guard is just gonna keep your pants from getting greasy from touching the chain. Coming back to the Altus, I love that they have a derail your guard. So if the bike tips over or if it's folded and ends up on its side, it's gonna protect it a little bit. We've got a barrel adjuster here. So you can do some little tune ups. If, if it's not shifting quite right, you don't even need to take it to a shop. You just uh, mess with that a little bit there. Plastic folding pedals from Welgo. I'm a fan of aluminum alloy, but there aren't as many choices for folding pedals when you go alloy. And this is gonna reduce the weight a little bit. It might not scratch up the back of your car or wherever you're storing this thing. Again, if you fold it and it ends up on its side. The wheel size is great. These are 20 inch wheels, 20, but the tires are 2.4 inches wide. They almost look like plus size for me initially. Plus size is 2.6, 2.8, 3.0. They use those for like a lot of mountain bikes and stuff. It gives you more float, a little bit more comfort. It also actually increases the diameter of the wheel itself because it's a little bit taller and that's going to lower your tack angle. It's gonna give you more air volume, which is gonna be squishy and more comfortable. I'm definitely a fan of that, especially on a folding bike where you can't have a suspension seat post. And even though you do have a suspension fork, the travel is just pretty limited. You know, if 40 millimeters maybe, it does have preload adjust. And I tighten that up right away, even though I only weigh like 140 pounds, I just, I cranked the preload up because I was bottoming out the crown of the suspension was actually making contact with the top of that steel fender. 
so you can see the travel is actually a little bit longer than the space right here. I'm still a fan of having the fenders, but by tightening up the preload, I'm not hitting it quite so frequently. And of course you can lock it out right here. It's even kind of like a progressive lockout. And that's for someone who doesn't want that bouncy feeling or they're bottoming out like I am. Pretty nice fork. I mean, it is a spring fork. It's not super light, but to have that much adjustability at this price point, really good. And up here you can see the optional front rack mounts, those three bolts, as well as that headlight. I love that this headlight's kind of aimable. It's not unsprung down here, like on the arch of the suspension fork. It's sprung, even though it's just, you know, 40 millimeters or whatever. And it has a side cutout window. It runs off the main battery pack. I can't say that for the rear light. This thing, it's just got a couple triple A's. You know, you kind of pull that tab and then turn it on and you've got a light. Better than nothing. Keep in mind if you're wearing like a longer coat as it gets to be fall and winter time, if you're sitting on this saddle and your coat is hanging down, you could easily block that rear light. So I'm a fan of having it like on the back of a rack. They do have the optional racks or maybe at the end of your, your rear fender. But in this case, hey, it's better than nothing. And because it has that clear housing, it also has some side visibility for increased safety. Great kickstand, some adjustability here. I actually extended it to get the bike to stand up a little bit straighter. We got the pedals here that we looked at on the other side. But if I cycle these backwards, you'll notice that they're not making contact with the kickstand even when it's deployed. And even if you're pedaling, I feel like there's pretty good clearance here, especially for a folding electric bike where everything's a little bit more compact. And then you can see there's um, a magnet on this spring right here. So when you fold the bike, it meets that clasp and it keeps it from coming unfolded. And this is one of those bikes where you can actually kind of tip it and walk it around. And they have a really good unboxing and folding and unfolding video that they made specifically for that. I think they've done a really good job. Their site is nice, pretty high quality stuff for again, that sort of $1,700 to $2,000 price point. I'm a fan of that. We do have hydraulic disc brakes right here. Not super familiar with the brand. It's got this like saddle TO thing going on. But they are hydraulic disc brakes, decent levers, three finger levers with adjustable reach. So if you have those smaller hands, you can bring the lever in a little bit. 160 millimeter rotors, front and rear, standard dual piston calipers. One thing I noticed is that it doesn't have motor inhibitors on either one of these brake levers, which means you could be braking and the motor could still be active. The best thing to do is just stop pedaling. Um, I do have a little bit of some gripes around this. There's those five levels of assist. If you're in zero, the throttle doesn't work. And the throttle is actually capped by the level of assist. So if you're in the level one assist, the motor is going to be a lot weaker and it's not going to hit that maximum 20 mile per hour top speed. You're going to have to arrow up all the way to five. I'm a fan of having a throttle that overrides, like no matter what level of assist, you've got full power throttle at any time. They just didn't set it up that way. And again, no motor inhibitors. And you know, all in all, having a 500 watt planetary geared hub motor back here, you can see it's Quali Sports branded. It's kind of what you'd expect. You hear it zip a little bit, but it gives you decent torque. And especially combined with a smaller wheel diameter, like the smaller you get, the more mechanical advantage hub motors have. The fenders being steel, if they get scratched, they could rust. Uh, so keep an eye on that. You might want to use like black fingernail polish or some touch up paint or just kind of store it inside. A lot of times with a folding electric bike, that's a lot easier to do and kind of put it in a closet or something like that. Charging it is another one of these areas where there's a little bit of a trade-off. The charger itself is very nice. It's about two pounds, but it's three amps, where a lot of times I'm just seeing two amps. And it's got the wall side plug. There's the, the port that plugs right into the top of this seat post battery up here. You can charge the frame battery by removing it or charge them both simultaneously using this port here. And look how close that is to the crank arm. You have to bend down and kind of get down here. In terms of water and cable management and stuff, it's, you know, there's a little bit here. That's what I was talking about, how this, this bundle actually gets a little bit close to the chain. So it's a teeny bit cluttered and they're not internally routed, the wiring the cables, the electronics. But in some ways for folding electric bikes, I've heard that's a good thing. It makes it a little bit easier to service. Quali Sports is selling direct online. So you're gonna get this, you'll do some unboxing, which is a lot easier for folding electric bikes. There's no return policy for these special edition bikes because they're numbered. Um, you know, I guess it's minor trade off, something you're gonna think about, I guess, after having used it a lot, you're like, oh yeah, it's kind of inconvenient to have to plug in and charge both of these batteries independently versus just one plug. You can remove both of the batteries, which is gonna significantly reduce the weight of the bike for folding, for transporting it. Um, again, 
all things considered, pretty good. The, the most difficult part of unboxing and assembling is actually getting these fenders lined up right. And then, you know, I, I love that we have a direct mount to the lowers of that suspension fork. They, they tighten up really nicely. It's not like a plastic cuff that's gonna crack or slide around. On the back here, it connects directly to the frame. Don't over tighten these. You don't want to strip them and just you know, you can see there's a lot going on here So I think they've done a good job I've got the fender set up so they don't zing too much But they're they're pretty close and I've noticed they can slip around a little bit and occasionally you might hear Where the tires making contact because they're high volume now. I wouldn't change a thing I like the high volume tires. I might go with aluminum alloy fenders personally I also noticed that uh, during assembly this seat post clamp was very very tight and because this is actually their optional locking seat clamp, you know, it's got this little security lock right here. And you can go like this and unlock it like that. And then you can open that buckle. Okay, so when it's locked, you're sort of securing that battery, which makes sense because that's one of the more expensive, important parts of the bike. But to, to really loosen it up, I actually needed, I think it's like a T30 security like driver or bit and i had to you know buy that separately to loosen this enough to actually get this tight so whoever like kind of prepped and assembled this bike they over tightened that and i i it could have damaged the battery it was way too tight so that's some feedback for quality sports it's the only sort of complaint that i have all the other touch points were great the kickstand the pedals really nice Celle royale uh, saddle here that's very comfortable and looks beautiful locking ergonomic grips of course you can spin the handlebar up here to get those those brake levers aligned everything here can kind of be swiveled to adjust so you don't get glare from the monitor or screen for example and a very nice little bell nice triggers a little bit of a complaint on these you can push with your thumb but then you have to pull with your index finger and i like to use my index and pointer or pointer and middle fingers to break so shimano does have nicer triggers that let you use your thumb for both shifting up and down and this just isn't it so i don't know this might be you know tourney or altus oh there it is altus so it matches the derailleur so it's a little bit of a lower level part not the end of the world and still nine speed drivetrain here's the uh telescoping stem that I was talking about earlier. We loosen this up, you can raise or lower it. I've noticed if you go too high, see how these cables stretch a little bit? And then if you fold the bike, they can they can kind of pull and it can be, you know, it, it can start to create some problems up here and maybe even unplug wires. So just be conscious before you fold the bike, kind of drop in the saddle, drop in the, the handlebar and everything. And just being conscious, anytime you're dealing with a folding electric bike, there's there's a couple extra steps. But I know a lot of people that will buy these bikes and they'll never fold them. They just want something that's approachable, easy to stand over, low standover height, feels small, it feels kind of right sized if you're a petite rider. But keep in mind, I'm 58 pounds with those two batteries. It's It's still a fairly heavy bike. Thankfully, most of that weight is right there in the seat post and the mainframe. It's low, it's centered. They're doing a pretty good job. And then from this side, you can see I unlocked the, the clamp. I can open it up, slide the seat post. And I love that Quali Sports actually put some labels here for the height. And then once you put it back in, we lock it down. So you can kind of remember, maybe you have multiple family members and each person has their, their ride height. And you can actually see that the battery has an independent on off switch. It's got a locking cylinder, so that's the second point of security. It secures the main battery, since there isn't a lock on the folding joint. And then at the top here, there's a USB-A like charging port, and that is so cool. It's, it's actually duplicated up here at the base of the display, so there's two places that you could charge portable electronics. And that could be used at like a campsite for just charging your, your gear. And then this one can be used like while you're riding if you wanna add an additional light or maybe GPS or something for your phone. Shipping is free in the contiguous US for these bikes. It is class two, meaning pedal assist as well as throttle. 20 mile per hour top speed, 840 watt hours for these 48 volt batteries. All the right labeling, 500 watt motor. I don't know the torque on this, but again, with a smaller wheel, you get that mechanical advantage. And, and overall just, you know, it's for the price, especially it's one of my favorite folding electric bikes. One I've been very happy with that's more comfortable because of the tires and because of that suspension fork. So let's boot it up. We got the power button pressed on the main battery. Both of these are charged, they're plugged in. We just hold this power button for a second. I think this is like two and a half inches diagonal, grayscale, pretty easy to read in a, a bright sunny day like today. Four ticks on the battery infographic, not super precise. I'd prefer five or 10 or just like a 
percentage, a one one percent increments would be nice, but you know, with two batteries, you've got more range at least. Uh, timer, assist level, it starts in one, and you can go down to zero, in which case nothing works. Like the only thing is the display and that headlight. So you can pedal around and, and have, have the lights on. That's kind of nice. Current speed and miles per hour, distance. And then if we tap that power button, it changes to average speed and odometer. And then there's another, maybe like a current trip time. Max speed voltage. So that's another way to more precisely understand how full the battery is and then back to just your current speed and stuff. To get that headlight activated, you need to hold the up arrow for a couple seconds. You'll see a little icon there. We do have walk mode if you hold the down arrow for a couple seconds, whoa. And it's actually pretty useful. I mean, the bike's kind of heavy and if you walk through a park like I am and you need to climb a hill, the bike will help you out with that. Also, if you're riding and you're above seven kilometers per hour, according to their literature, and you hold the down arrow, you can lock in like a cruise control. So you don't have to use this thumb throttle and you basically just kind of hands-free, you're just riding. But because there aren't motor inhibitors, you can't really exit cruise control easily by pulling the brakes or anything. You actually have to like click up or down and change assist level to get out of it. And I found that to be a little confusing when I was riding. I was, you know, I'm, I'm cruising, it's all good, I'm ready to stop. And now I'm fighting with the motor. So back to that being one of the little trade-offs for this bike. You can also kind of clear some of the menus by holding up and down, sort of reset it. I think that's about it. So it's time to hop on this thing and actually give it a go. It is fairly zippy, so I can start in the grass, assist level five, and just use that throttle. Got that suspension fork helping me out here. So it's a little bit more comfortable. Also a little bit more stable because of those big tires. But like most folding electric bikes with the smaller wheels, it's, it's, a, it's you know, a little twitchy. I, I just think they've they've done the best they could with this format. Also, I should point out that because that headlight is mounted to sort of the steer tube on the bike, it doesn't point where you steer. So it's gonna sort of point in line with the frame. Same with the basket. And, and then for the basket, that's kind of nice because it's a little bit more stable. It's not gonna dump and it's not gonna kind of whip around and create momentum when you steer. Here's the pedal assist, very responsive. Not too bad. This bike could really go a lot of places. And I love that they did, you know, the puncture resistant tires on the special edition because, you know, neither one of these has quick release. You've got a bolt up there and you'd have to deal with that magnet plate. Same thing back here. It's a lot more screwing around for that rear motor as well because you've got like the power cable and stuff. That's another thing that's protected by that derailleur guard. Very happy with the gear spread here. Nine gears means that you have smaller steps between each gear, and that 11 to 34 tooth spread is it's pretty good. I see a lot of cheaper electric bikes that just have like 14 to 28 or 11 to 32. So 11 to 34 for a folding bike, not bad. Shifters are working pretty well. Definitely kind of a smooth, easy start on that hub motor. And so let's do a throttle test from standstill here. Yeah, not bad. There we are, we got up to like 18, 19 right there. Got those nice hydraulic disc brakes, very smooth. Don't have to use a ton of hand effort, and they're gonna be more consistent between the left and the right brake. As usual, this is a free review, just kind of a neat bike and a brand that I've been familiar with. So happy anniversary to Quali Sports. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and consider sharing it with a friend. And check out my website, electricbikereview.com. There's an awesome category and filter tool set that will help you navigate thousands of electric bikes to find the right one for your lifestyle and budget. You can post comments, connect in the forums, and discover local shops so you can go in for a test ride and get your bike set up just the way you want it. 
I've been running EBR since 2012, providing the best data and limiting the ads. Have fun out there, ride safe, and we'll see you next time.